Aggies. Well, we transition back to uh, discussing DeMar Hamlin and uh, his injury and his collapse on Monday night in Cincinnati on Monday Night Football. And joining us this morning on Ramon, Kayla, and Will is our friend Inky Johnson, Vol for Life, uh, providing his perspective with us on the show. Inky, we appreciate you giving us a couple minutes this morning. How are you? What's going on, guys? How are you guys? Uh, hey, Inky. We're doing all right. And, uh, Inky, I just wanted to first get your reaction to uh, watching the game on Monday, seeing DeMar Hamlin's injury and collapse, and um, it, just the, the sense of urgency from the medical staff. What was your uh, initial reaction to what we saw Monday in Cincinnati? Man, I was just overwhelmed, you know, with a ton of emotion. You know, I, I sat with it for a while. You know, just dissecting the different elements of it, of course, I couldn't help but, you know, identify with it, you know, even though our situations weren't specifically the same, uh, just knowing what that moment brings in terms of emotions, in terms of how it impacts and affects a family, and in terms of how it impacts and affects the guys that you play with, the coaches, and even the supporters, man. And so, yeah, it was just a lot of different range of emotions for me. When grateful it, that grateful that they were able to get to him in time. When it, when it comes to the initial onset of everything, Ink man, it's first and foremost is you your concern. I remember watching us like, all right, Ink, get up, you know, and that, that's the initial mindset. When you didn't get up, and I'm I'm sure Demar Hamlin doesn't understand what's going on with him in this scenario. Uh, but what was your mindset, Ink, while being on that ground and watching your teammates be around you? It, it's scary, man. You know, because as an athlete. And just as a person, you know, um, I believe everybody has in them a level of resilience, right? But just speaking to the athlete, right, the modern-day athlete, you know, it's something in your – you feel oftentimes you're invincible, right? Like even if certain things happen, you're going to bounce back and you're going to respond to it. And for the first time in my life, I couldn't get up, right? And I'm sure for the first time in his life, he was sitting there, and like when they brought him back, like you can't get up. Like that's frightening. Right, that's scary because you've never been in that space and places before. And so for me, it was it was a wake up call, man. But it was it was frightening the process. And 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 from there, Inc., the severity of your 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 injury too. Uh, I remember you told us, and we didn't really understand it till the next day after surgery was done. But like the idea that if they didn't act fast, you could have died. Like where was that? When did that hit you? The understanding of that, and that's where Demar Hamlin was also. Yeah, man, it, it hit me at the hospital, and uh, obviously, man, it hit him right on the field, you know. And um, when I heard that, man, it was it was it was hard to process, right? And I was thankful and grateful, man, that they even caught it, you know, because a lot of people knew the injury. A lot of people speculated shoulder, arm, even me, right? I thought broken arm or something like that. But when he ran in and said, "We noticed you ruptured your main subclavian artery and you're bleeding internally." And we got to rush you back and perform emergency surgery, take your main vein out of your left leg, plug it into your chest in order to save your life. Like, he was like, we got to do that now. And he was like, or you won't be alive in the morning. You'll bleed out. Nobody on the outside of those rooms knew that. Wow. Like, the people in the waiting room, they didn't know that, right? They just thought Ink was back getting protocol. And when the doctor was like, we got to do that now or you won't be here in the morning, right? I was just like, man, let's go. Like, I prayed and I was scared, to be honest. But it was it was tough to process, man. Even when I watch uh, Demar, man, just like it was like nine minutes, right, to where they mm -hmm. was out there. I think it was nine minutes. It seemed like forever when I was watching it, right. I was thankful that they were there. I'm just talking about just the severity of the moment, the fragility of the moment. It seemed like it was forever, right. But it was only nine minutes, and they did an incredible job. But to me, just processing it and watching it, it was like, man, I was watching a movie, a scene from a movie, all over again. And and with that being said, so of course the conversation should they play the game, not play the game. When you went off with us, Inc., we we were, we had an opportunity to see you. We saw your eyes open. You, you gave the thumbs up. In that moment, when when McVay, uh, Jason McVay, our trainer at the time, were telling you and processing you out of the stadium, uh, did you understand what that thumbs up meant or a reaction from you meant to us, uh, to the crowd in that moment? I didn't. I didn't. I was um, I was just giving a thumbs up more so like, you know, man, I'm here. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm breathing. I'm good. Right. But I didn't understand or process what it meant to my teammates in that moment. I didn't understand what it meant to the supporters in that moment. 
It was more so me just showing everybody that I felt was supporting me, like, man, I'm good, to try to take a little bit of the burden off of them in terms of their thought process of trying to understand, like, is he alive? What's going on with him? And so I just threw the thumbs up, like, nah, man, I'm cool. But I didn't know the next phase of that was going to be me having to get life-saving surgery. Nikki, how much did perspective on just life change for you after that? Oh, my whole life changed, right? And it's like even with watching a moment like that, right, with what happened with DeMar, like you talk to people often and you try to get them to, I feel like as people, just the totality of us as people, we're very ungrateful, right? Just as people in terms of the spirit, the attitude, right, the approach, how we look at life, the perspective that we see it with. I feel like as people, oftentimes, we're extremely ungrateful and we're entitled, right? We feel as if life is just promised to us. I was thinking about this this morning. I took my kids back to school, right? They started school back this morning. Me and my wife are driving. It's storming in Atlanta. Like, I saw so many accidents, right, taking my children to school. Mm. So many accidents. And I was just thinking in my mind, I'm sure every person that got in an accident this morning Nobody thought when they left the house with their children, with their spouses, man, this morning I'm going to get in an accident. I'm sure DeMar didn't think, man, I'm going to go out playing this game, and in the the quarter I'm going to go make a tackle, and I'm going to go into cardiac arrest. He never thought that. I never thought fourth quarter, two minutes, Air Force game, I'm going to go make a tackle, find myself in the emergency room, my career is going to end, right? And so you often say to people things such as, hey, man, don't take what you do for granted. Mm. Hey, man, be grateful. Not just in sports, just in whatever we do, right? And I think what that moment did for people is they saw it and they saw the fragility of life and the fact of, as people, we think we have so much control. When you see a moment like that, when you see something that happens in the world like COVID, when you experience a life-threatening injury, what it does is it shifts your perspective, but it brings a reality check in terms of you have no control, And so if you have no control externally, control what you can control. Perspective, attitude, energy, what I bring into an environment, how I respond. And so if you notice, most of my messaging, even as I speak, it's about gratitude. It's about perspective. It's about response. And so I often say to people, the hardest part of my injury, it wasn't my injury, even though that was extremely tough. The hardest part of my injury was watching people take the game that I once played for granted. Right. That was the toughest part for me. And that's where I want to go back to you as far as the NFL is a business. We know that we've all benefited from it. And you spoke to Absolutely. NFL teams and everything. Right. I've played you. Everybody's benefited from this game. Where were you with us? I remember I told them earlier when you you never told us, or at least never told me that you weren't going to play anymore, maybe until like my senior year. Right. And you were still on campus working out with us. You doing box jumps, you running sprints with us, you're in the sand pit with us. You never told us openly in a team meeting, hey, my playing career is done because, as you said, you think you're superheroes in this. How important is that for, was it for us and also for the Bills and for the NFL to hear, you know, DeMar Hamlin be like, all right, y'all, I'm okay. Y'all can go do this thing. Yeah, man, I think it's extremely important. But I think also, man, um, Sometimes, Moan, I feel like you can go through something so tough as a person, right, like so heavy as a person, and our first reaction as people, oftentimes, we want to do what? We want to understand, Yeah. right? If we encounter something, we want to understand it. If something comes from left field, hits us in life that we don't – like we want to immediately – man, what is this, right? Injury, cardiac arrest, like what is this? Like how did it happen? We want to understand it. And I often tell people, man, sometimes things can be so heavy – You just got to survive the moment. Just survive it, right? Day by day, moment by moment, situation by situation. Just survive it. And what I was doing, Moan, the reason I didn't share it in a meeting, the reason I didn't share it with guys, I was trying to survive, bro. Mm. Because I was going through something that was so traumatic to me, right? Like, I still get emotional, but I was going through something that was so traumatic for me. Like, nobody could fight that battle for me, right? And so every single day, in spite of the smiles, in spite of dapping people up, in spite of the box jumps, in spite of the workouts, I was trying to survive, bro. Like, I was trying to find some level of perspective in it, right? Because you got to think. You go to sleep and you wake up, you can never use your right arm and hand again, Mm. right? They cut you in your chest. They cut you six times down your left thigh. 
They cut you from the bottom of your armpit to the bottom of your hand. 350 seconds. Like I had been sliced and diced like a fish. Right? And I was just a collegiate athlete, bench pressing, running, jump. I was trying to survive. And so for him, I'm sure it's going to be a moment in time to where it's going to be like, man, what is this? Right? And my, my advice and insight to him would be, even when you get back on your feet, like don't rush it. Mm-hmm. Right? Take your time processing it. Take your time dealing with it. Because I'll never forget, Mo, they took me to counseling when I was at Tennessee, right? Yeah. And I've never shared this. They took me to counseling when I was at Tennessee after my injury happened. And I didn't know anything about therapy, counseling. I didn't know anything about it. And I, I credit them for doing this, right? But at the time, I wasn't prepared and I didn't understand it, right? And so I went into therapy and I sat with the gentleman. He was nice as all get out. But I sat there every single day. And I really wasn't into it, right? Mm. Because I was still trying to survive the moment. And that's one of my biggest regrets, right? Because I got to a point where I was able to dissect it and start to work my way through it. But that's one of my biggest regrets, right? That I stopped going to therapy. I went to him. I remember I told him like, oh man, I'm cool on that. We ain't ain't gotta go to that. (laughs) But I got to a point to where I had to face it, right? And I had to deal with it. And I wish early on, I would have went into those therapy sessions and had somebody to help me really process it and work through it. But I just wasn't prepared and ready. And I didn't understand it because I was still trying to survive the moment. And so I think it's important, man. So for the the Mar and, and, and moving the aftermath, life is just all that matters right now. Right. Screw football. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you tell a guy like him other than therapy, talking it through um, for people that got to deal with this, you know, watching it also or the list, the late, you know, the lowest on the list when it comes to that. But what's the advice oh. for moving? Because I to say you're doing what you're doing right now, ain't, I, I definitely thought you was going to the NFL, but you flipped it, you know? Absolutely, man. I would um I would just tell him gratitude, man. Like gratitude, bro. I can't drive that message home enough. But also, man, just appreciating the small wins. Like I think um, you know, it's like it's like when you get injured or you experience something traumatic, oftentimes the perspective of people goes to the space and place of what happened. Right? Man, he made a tackle. He fell into cardiac arrest. Like, man, it wasn't even a crazy tap. Like, we, we dissect it naturally. That's us as people, right? And oftentimes we forget, like, this is going to change him for the rest of his life. You know what I'm saying? Like, my injury changed me for the rest of my life. And so when I would see an article that said, oh, man, Inky's career is ended. Inky got a paralyzed right arm and hand. I was like, yeah, I hear you, but my life changed. Like, his life is going to be changed for the rest of his life and so the thing i would tell him is your life is going to be changed for the rest of your life but you got your life Mm -hmm. not trying to minimize the situation right not trying to minimize what happened you got your life right gratitude gratitude appreciate the moment you got your life celebrate the small wins when you come out of it and you get through the fall appreciate the moments appreciate the people and take your time as you work through it and you try to figure it out to get back to some normalcy in life. Inky, on the way out, uh, and this has been a great conversation. It's so good to hear your perspective on this. Um, it, it's cool to me that you have used what happened in your life and you've used the negative event as a positive. Uh, I know DeMar Hamlin said when he was drafted, I, I feel like this is my purpose from God to help my community and to give back to Pittsburgh, um, You know where he's from. And I, and I think that's such a cool part of your story and the perspective you're giving on DeMar as well. It's not just being thankful for the things that you have always been able to do that are regular routine parts of your life. It's being thankful for the negatives and using that as a mission as you have um, uh, to do a lot of good and speak from a position of experience. Absolutely, man. And, and like I often challenge people and I say to them, like, is it really, is it really perspective? Is it really gratitude? If you can't be grateful for the opposition, adversity and unfortunate moments, Hmm. Because we all can be grateful for things that happen that are great, things that happen and go our way, things that happen and it plays out the way we want it to, right? But is it really gratitude when we're grateful and thankful for things that happen the way we want them to, right? Gratitude isn't tested until something goes wrong. Perspective isn't tested until you don't get what you want. And then you have to find perspective in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the uncertainty, 
in the midst of a paralyzed right arm and hand in your career, you have to find it, right? And so I would say to him, once you capture perspective, once you capture gratitude, never let it go. It took me a while to capture it, right? Because somebody would always come to me with a different option for my arm. Hey, Inky, you can go here. They're doing this here. Hey, they created this technology, Inky. Hey, you can go try this, right? And you go down this rabbit hole of trying all these different things, and it makes it hard to capture peace, right? And so once you capture it, protect it. Once you capture gratitude, once you capture peace, protect it, right, and appreciate it. Mm. Great stuff, uh, uh, our friend Thanks, Inky, Inky Johnson with us this morning. Inky, we appreciate you giving us a couple more minutes here uh, uh, to speak on this issue, to share your perspective, and uh, uh, really just grateful to have you on the show, man. Likewise, man. I appreciate you guys, and thanks for giving me the opportunity and the time. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. All right. There is Inky Johnson with us this morning on Amon, Kayla, and Will. Uh, we'll wrap up the show. Coming up next on Amon, Kayla, and Will, 104.5 The Zone.